What climbing rope do I need? That's a really good question. But the answer might not be as straightforward as you would expect. Especially if you're looking for your first climbing rope. In this video, I'll explore some of the key differences between climbing ropes and why you should invest some time in finding the right climbing rope for you. But it's a huge topic, so we cannot look into all the details. And if you're new to this channel, then you come to the right place if you're looking for advice on climbing gear and to seek inspiration on specific climbing areas and climbing routes around Europe, being rock, alpine and ice climbing. So why not consider subscribing to the channel right away and hit the bell icon to be notified when new videos are released. But let's get into it. The first thing you should consider is what type of climbing you're doing since the requirements for your rope will be very different. If you're into sport climbing, then you might need a rope that is durable and can take a lot of falls from your projecting, while you probably need skinnier, dry-coated half ropes if you're doing multi-pitch ice climbing or alpine climbing, so the rope doesn't suck up moist and water. And if these terms already confuse you, then don't worry, we'll cover it later in the video. There are different types of ropes and it's really important that you get the right type for what you're doing. There are basically two types of ropes. There are static ropes and there's dynamic ropes. Static ropes do only stretch a very tiny bit, meaning that they will not absorb a fall. This means that the rest of the gear in the system and you will absorb the fall, increasing the risk of injury. Besides that, static ropes are not certified or designed for lead climbing or top roping anyway. They are designed for hauling and rescue operations where you ascend the rope with gear and do not want the rope to stretch as this makes the process much harder. So if you're looking for a rope for these situations, then you should consider a static rope. However, I will not explore static ropes any further in this video because they are only used for these very special situations. But if you have any good advice on static ropes, then let me know by leaving a comment below. Dynamic ropes, though, they stretch and absorb the force of a fall, and this is what you should be looking for if you're looking for a climbing rope. And this is also what I'll be focused on in the rest of the video. There are several subcategories of dynamic ropes, such as single ropes, half ropes, and twin ropes. And each of these subcategories have very different specifications and usages. So secondly, based on what type of climbing you would like to do, there are still things you need to factor in. For single pitch sport climbing, you would like a durable rope that can take a lot of beating as you project hard and will probably take a lot of falls. I would go for a rope that is between 9mm to 10mm thick, which strikes a good balance between being durable and lightweight. You could also consider getting a coated rope that protects against dust and sand. Ropes that are coated are usually a bit more expensive than non-coated ropes, but it's a really good way of prolonging the lifespan of the rope. So in the end, this is a really good investment. In terms of the length of your climbing rope, you should ask yourself how long the routes you usually climb outdoors are and how long the routes you would like to climb are. Often sport climbing routes are longer outdoors than indoors, so I would say that do not go for a rope that's shorter than 60 meters. And this will actually mean that you can climb routes up to 30 meters. Another consideration when choosing the length of the rope is that by time the ends of the rope will wear out and you have to cut them to keep the rope safe. And this will obviously shorten the rope. So you might want to go with a rope that is a bit longer than you would think of. If the usual routes you climb are 30 meters, then why not go for a 70 meter rope? The International Climbing and Mountaineering Federation, also known as the UIAA, tests ropes to see how many falls they can actually hold before failing. This is a specification that you can find on the package that your climbing rope comes in. Or you can look it up on the internet.
So single ropes and half ropes must withstand a minimum fall of five UII tested falls. Twin ropes must withstand a minimum of 12 UII falls. The test is done by dropping an 80 kilos weight onto the rope, while half ropes are tested by dropping a 55 kilo weight on each of the single strands of rope. And twin ropes are tested by dropping an 80 kilo weight on both strands of rope. and all ropes that meet the UIAA requirements are safe for climbing. And this is something you should really be aware about when you purchase your new climbing rope, especially online. A climbing rope with a higher fall rating though may just mean that the rope will last longer than a rope with a lower rating. However, after a severe fall, you should always inspect your rope for damages and consider retiring it if any damages occurs. Personally, I always check my climbing ropes before going on a trip, so I make sure that they should not have been in the bin instead of in the rope bag. And there are many ways to check for damages on your climbing rope, and we'll cover that in a later video. If you're looking to do any multi-pitch climbing, I would highly recommend going for half ropes. Half ropes are not the half length of a single rope, but they are climbed with in pairs, so you need two of them. Individually, they are not as strong as a single rope, but paired up, they distribute the impact force of a fall between them and also adds redundancy to a setup. So if any one of them are damaged, then the other one can still hold you. There's a lot of benefits with half ropes besides redundancy and impact force distribution. As an example, they can be tied together when upsizing off a multi-pitch, so you can actually upsize the full length of the rope, which will save you a lot of time. Besides this, having two ropes will also help you avoiding road drag as you clip more efficiently. And some tread climbers actually also climb single pitch routes with half ropes because they pull less on gear as rope drag will be less. And finally, there's twin ropes. Twin ropes are essentially half ropes, but with their specifications, you have to clip them both in the same piece of gear. They are really good for multi-pitch climbing where the route does not traverse or change direction too much as they are often skinnier and also weigh less than half ropes and therefore good for these particular types of climbing routes. They share the same advantages as half ropes but as they are skinnier they are less bulky. And if you have a little more cash on your hand then here's a few things that I think you should really consider investing in. Get a good rope bag for your climbing rope. It will help protect your rope from picking up dust and sand while carrying it around at the crack and also when belaying your climbing bodies. Also, invest in a good coating. At least invest in the entry-level coating that protects against dust and sand. If you're looking into doing ice climbing or alpine climbing, then invest in a dry coated rope. Dry coating means that the rope will not suck up moist and water and therefore freeze in cold conditions, rendering it completely impossible to handle. And also look for ropes with a middle mark. The middle mark is typically a black line on the middle of the rope and makes it significantly easier to identify how much rope you have paid out and therefore also how much rope is left. And finally, get a specialized uh, rope washing detergent to keep your rope clean when you come back from the crack. There are special detergents for keeping your climbing rope clean and if you do so, and stored in a place without too much uh, temperature change and out of the sun, then your rope lifespan will be extended. Just remember to respect the manufacturer's instructions on the expected lifespan of the particular rope. So that's it. These were some of the basic things you need to know when choosing maybe your first or your next climbing rope. And if you like this video, then remember to give it a big thumbs up and maybe share with a few of your climbing buddies.